In the universe of Pirates of the Caribbean, pirate lords play a vital role in the original trilogy. From the cowardly and greedy South Fang of the South China Sea, to the stoic and wise father of Captain Jack Sparrow, Captain Edward Teague, this video will explore all of the pirate lords in the Pirates of the Caribbean saga. The Brethren Court traces its roots back to the 1600s when the seas were a lawless frontier. Pirates, each vying for power and territory, realize the need for a unified body to protect their interests and challenge the might of the sea goddess Calypso, under the instruction of her former mortal lover, Davy Jones. Thus, the Brethren Court was born, a council made up of nine pirate lords, each holding one of the coveted nine pieces of eight, each stripping the deity of her power. This act bound the pirate lords together, setting the precedent for future gatherings of the court whenever the balance of power was at risk. Brethren Court was made of nine pirate lords, each ruling over different regions of the seas. These lords are not just fearsome captains, but also embody the spirit of piracy in their respective territories. Hector Barbosa, one of the most cunning and ruthless pirates, is known for his unquenchable thirst for power and wealth. As the pirate lord of the Caspian Sea, Barbosa's influence stretches far beyond his region, making him a formidable force within the Brethren Court. His knowledge of the sea and his mystical elements makes him a key player in the fight against the East India Trading Company, formerly cursed by the legendary treasure of Cortez after stealing the Black Pearl from Captain Jack Sparrow. Barbosa was killed in battle by his former captain. Revived by Tiadama to assemble the Brethren, Barbosa pulled the strings to help free Calypso from her human form and hopefully lay waste to his enemies. After the war against the East India Company had ended, Barbosa spent years captaining his prized ship until it was captured by Blackbeard. His rule as Pirate Lord of the Caspian Sea began after being compensated a piece of eight from the former Pirate Lord Boris Polochnik as compensation for the destruction of Barbosa's previous ship, the Cobra. Amand, known for his ferocity and strategic brilliance, ruled over the Black Sea. Little is known about Amand's early life and pirate career, but it's said they became the Pirate Lord of the Black Sea by single-handedly killing the previous Pirate Lord and his entire crew armed only with a scimitar and unmatched skill. Commanding his flagship, the Seraph, Amon led the Barbary Corsairs, a coalition of Muslim privateers who targeted Christian merchant ships in the Mediterranean. He allied with the Ottoman Empire to expand his control from Morocco to Turkey and occasionally beyond. Amon's forays into the Adriatic Sea often provoked the ire of Captain Villanueva, the pirate lord who ruled those waters. The Barbary Corsairs frequently clashed with Villanueva's Spanish treasure fleet, which patrolled the Adriatic Sea. Mistress Ching, the legendary pirate queen, commanded a vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean. Not much is known about Mistress Ching's early life, other than her origins in China, where she found success in Shanghai, the maritime capital. Eventually, she became the pirate lord of the Pacific Ocean, with her piece of eight being a pair of spectacles. With a powerful armada at her command, Mistress Ching ruled the coastal waters with terror, leading a pirate confederation after her husband's death. Pirate profited from smuggling between Japan and China and owned a chain of brothels. Known for her ruthlessness, her pirates often beheaded their captives. Though, details are unclear, her fleet was estimated to consist of hundreds or even thousands of ships, enough to guard her territory and drive off rivals. Sumbaji Ngria, a fierce and resilient pirate, ruled the Indian Ocean. Little is known about Sumbaji's early life, except that he was once a Hindu priest before turning to piracy in pursuit of fortune. Sri Sumbaji eventually rose to become the pirate lord of the Indian Ocean, where he disrupted trade between Europe and India by targeting wealthy merchant ships, particularly those of the East India Trading Company. He owned many vessels, with his favorite being the Otter, known for its ability to slip in and out of ports unnoticed by company ships. He was widely feared, as many believed he possessed supernatural powers. Gentleman Jokard, despite his refined demeanor, was a ruthless pirate who dominated the Atlantic Ocean. Originally named Gombo, he was a former slave sold to a rich plantation owner in New Orleans by the former pirate lord of the Atlantic, King Samuel. During the quest for shadow gold, Gombo led a successful uprising on a tobacco plantation in New Orleans, killing his master and freeing his fellow slaves. After escaping with the help of Captain Jack Sparrow, Gombo became the captain of the Ranger, adopting the name Gentleman Jocard. Jacquard claimed a tobacco cutter as one of the nine pieces of eight, solidifying his status as a pirate lord. Cao Fang was a legendary Chinese pirate, feared across the South China Sea and known as the Pirate Lord of Singapore. 
Though scarred and battle-hardened, he was known for his shrewdness and was not above betraying fellow pirates for safety from the East India Trading Company. As captain of the Empress and leader of an army of Chinese pirates, Cao Fang controlled the sea routes from Singapore. He became a pirate lord during the quest for the Shadow Gold by overthrowing his brother, Ilang Dao, with help from Captain Jack Sparrow. Despite risking his life for Jack, Sparrow repaid him by stealing the hearts of his twin companions, Lian and Park. Cao Fang possessed a key to a great pirate mystery, navigational charts leading to the farthest gate and the world's end, which he kept hidden in his uncle's temple. This drew the attention of Hector Barbosa, who sent Will Turner to steal the charts, leading to a clash between Fang and Barbosa. After a betrayal by Lord Cutler Beckett, Cao Fang joined the Brethren Court's fight against him. Mistaking Elizabeth Swan for the sea goddess Calypso, Cao Fang gave his piece of eight, the Jade Captain's Knot, before dying from an attack by the Flying Dutchman. Eduardo Villanueva was a cunning and ruthless pirate who served as the Pirate Lord of the Adriatic Sea and a member of the Brethren Court. Known for his reserved nature, Villanueva's early life remains largely unknown. But his career saw him partnering with the Spanish government, allowing him to retire as a noble among European aristocracy. Commanding his powerful flagship, the Centurion, Villanueva crashed with the Barbary Corsairs and rival pirate lords, particularly the Frenchman Capitan Cheval, whom he shared a fierce rivalry. Despite unofficially retiring before the Fourth Brethren Court, Villanueva attended the meeting where the pirate lords debated freeing the sea goddess Calypso and ultimately declared war against Lord Cutler Beckett's East India Trading Company armada. Capitan Cheval was a flamboyant and daring pirate who was a former member of French aristocracy who became the pirate lord of the Mediterranean Sea. It was unclear whether he turned to piracy after his family lost their fortune or if they lost it as punishment for his piratical activities. Commanding his flagship, the Fancy, Cheval spent years pillaging wealthy European trade ships and trading between old and new worlds, particularly the French Caribbean colonies of Montserrat and Haiti. He is known for plundering the Spanish treasure fleets of fellow pirate lord Captain Villanueva as they return from places like Mexico. And finally, we'll be skipping Jack Sparrow for now since he deserves his own full biographical video someday. We arrive at Captain Edward Teague, the pirate lord of Madagascar, though not an owner of a piece of eight. Teague's past remains largely mysterious, though he is believed to have been born in British India. A fearsome yet aristocratic figure, Teague was a renowned pirate with a blend of ruggedness and charm, capable of enchanting with a ballad from his guitar. As the pirate lord of Madagascar and keeper of the code, he commanded respect from all pirate lords in the Brethren Court. In the late 17th century, he had a son, Jack Sparrow, who he protected during his childhood, intervening against threats like Rusty Nickers and Captain Lucille Graven. After Jack's escape from Shipwreck Cove, Teague searched from aboard a ship, the Misty Lady. He visited the voodoo priestess Teodoma, but did not find Jack until months later, when he located him and his companion Fitzwilliam P. Dalton III in the Caribbean Sea. Teague brought them aboard the Lady, and the ship was soon attacked by Admiral Lawrence Norrington's British Royal Navy fleet. The pirates were captured, but escaped with the help of Teague's old friend, Josh Me Gibbs. During the ensuing battle, Teague used his magical ring to compel Dalton to assist him, rescued Norrington's son James from the sea, and ultimately defeated Norrington's ship. After the battle, Teague and Jack returned the Misty Lady and sailed to a beautiful island near Poseidon's Peak, where Teague helped Jack acquire a new boat. After many years of Jack's own crazy adventures, Teague would often appear when his son least expected it, granting him guidance through troubling times. The Brethren Court's influence extends far beyond the seas they rule. Their decisions have shaped the course of pirate history, and their legacy lives on in the stories and legends of the Caribbean. From the imprisonment of the sea goddess Calypso and the fight against the East India Trading Company, the Brethren Court has proven time and time again that piracy is not just a life of crime, but a way of life that values freedom, brotherhood, and resistance against oppression. As the world changes and the age of piracy comes to an end, the Brethren Court remained a symbol of the golden age of pirates, a time when the seas were ruled by those brave enough to defy the powers that be and carve out their own destiny. That's it for today's video. If you liked it, give it a like and hit the subscribe button, comment down below and share your thoughts on the Pirate Lords, join my Patreon page for early access to my videos, and join my Discord server. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.